Entertainment presents A Thousand Years of War, the story of Aleria and Turalyon by Robert Brooks. Narrated by Stephen Pacey. Part One, Two Bright Lights. Turalyon stood alone, unmoving, silently witnessing the death of a world. It had been only hours since the sealing of the Dark Portal. The land of Draenor crumbled, continents cracked open, the oceans heaved and boiled. Huge chunks of Earth were thrown into the sky, and there they stayed, aloft, spinning slowly, refusing to fall back to the ground. Reality itself was unraveling. Turalyon was calm. He was not afraid. The light was with him, even here in this strange place. This was not Draenor. It looked like Draenor, yes, but he was not truly there. The cracked red plains of Hellfire Peninsula stretched out beneath his feet, yes, but he was not truly there. In the distance, he could see the hastily wrought Alliance staging ground, on a hold, stubbornly withstanding the quakes and tremors. And yet, he was not truly there. Turalyon had been there, of course. Only a few hours ago, he had been fighting for his life there. Hellfire Peninsula had been filled with orcs, Alliance soldiers, broken war machines, the corpses of the fallen, discarded weapons, and all the other detritus of battle. He saw none of that now. There was no sign a battle had ever taken place. Only empty, dead ground surrounded him. He was offered a view of Draenor's destruction, but no, he was not truly there. He was in another realm, one he did not know. The skies were dark, twisting, filled with strange, conflicting powers. He could see entire worlds hanging in the distance, seemingly close enough to touch, and yet unimaginably far away. He felt the light intermingling with the shadow. He felt the primal, uncontrolled forces of chaos and order, life and death, clashing here. He didn't know this place, nor did he know how to escape it. He kept watch for any familiar faces. Kagga, Danath, Kerdran, Aleria. He wondered if they had survived. He remained still, staying out in the open, letting the light flow through him. He would be patient. He would be a beacon for anyone else in this place. Time passed. Nothing appeared before him. But that did not mean nothing was there. Turalyon felt eyes upon him from the east, malevolent eyes. As the hours drifted onward, the sense of that predatory gaze did not fade. Whatever it was, it hungered for blood. Turalyon spoke aloud just to break the silence. Let it come. Let it know the light strength. Behind him from the west, a voice called out. A familiar voice. One he had prayed to hear again. Turalyon! He turned, smiling. She had found him. Hilaria! Thank the light. His breath caught. Her bow was raised, arrow knocked, aiming true at his heart. She released. Above the snap of her bow's string, she called a single word. Left! Turalyon didn't hesitate. He ducked to his left. The arrow flew past. He felt its breeze on his neck as it sailed on. It arced to the ground hundreds of paces away. Turalyon could see it sticking upright in the red dirt, feathers quivering. Aleria Windrunner approached him slowly, drawing another arrow. Her bow remained low, aimed at the ground. Her head turned, eyes darting, looking for a target. Apologies. I meant my left, not yours. Turalyon glanced at the arrow in the distance. Testing my reflexes? Or did you see something? I saw something. A shame. 
I would have been happy to test your reflexes too. Say the word and I'll throw my shield at you. A smile crossed Alaria's lips just for a moment. Perhaps later. She stood where Teralian had, looking at the ground. Tracks. She gestured downward. Teralian could see the impressions of his boots in the dry earth. But there, faintly, was a third mark, perhaps a pace away. Something had been standing behind him. No, he had turned at the last moment, so it had been in front of him, and he had not seen it. What was it? Aleria kept her eyes up, scanning the landscape in front of her. I saw something shimmering. When you turned, it took shape. I do not know what it was. It fled before my arrow could strike. An orc, perhaps. Nezul's warlocks may have come here. Not an orc, Aleria said firmly. Should we retrieve your arrow? Aleria looked at him. This place is not Dranor. Do you know how to leave it? It isn't. And I don't, he said. Then we need to conserve our resources. Her arrow had landed perhaps 200 paces away. They walked to it together. The distance passed in silence. Teralian had his hammer in hand, but he felt quiet jubilance. She had found him. It had been a brutal battle at the Dark Portal, unlike anything he had ever experienced. He had fought the Horde across two worlds, but he had never seen them desperate. At the Black Temple, their war chief, Nazul, had used instruments of power from Azeroth to create bridges to new lands. But his spells had spun out of control. Rifts had begun snapping open and closed all over Draenor, shredding the fabric of existence. The only escape had been Azeroth. But the uncontrolled destruction had bled through the Dark Portal, putting Azeroth itself in danger. The Alliance expedition had rushed to protect it. Alaria and Teralion had fought back to back, holding the line against waves of terrified orcs, buying time for Khadgar to seal the rift between the two lands, knowing that they too would be trapped on a dying world. In the chaos, another rift had opened near them. They had dived through, believing that anywhere in the cosmos had to be safer than staying put but they had become separated from each other. There was no telling where the rest of the Alliance expedition were. Maybe they were still on Draenor. Maybe they were here in this place. Maybe they had escaped to some far corner of the universe. Teralion didn't know. But at least the light had delivered him back to her. Aleria retrieved her arrow and returned it to her quiver. I believe we are being watched. She grimaced. I might be wrong. My instincts do not mean much here. They mean plenty to me. Duralian had hunted for sport in Lordaeron, but Alaria was ranger captain of Silvermoon. It had become her nature to think like a predator. I should have sensed it when it drew close. There's so much errant power here. I need to be more cautious. This is its territory. It hunts here. Strange that it hasn't tried to finish us off. I would have. Alaria let her bow rest at her side. I do not understand this place at all. I don't either, Teralian said. But you found me. That's enough for now. Alaria looked at him, smiled, and then she embraced him. He held her tightly against his chest. We will see our son again, she whispered. Light, willing. Damn the light! The Alliance expedition was a one-way journey. We all knew it. And yet I felt in my heart that we would see Arator again. Her love burned brightly, heating her words and warming Teralian's soul. But he did not share her confidence. It might be a long journey back to Azeroth, he said. We have time. You do. That brought her head up. Teralian met her gaze steadily. He knew she understood him. Human lives were short. The Elves of Silvermoon had the Sunwell, and thus something akin to immortality. If the Light lets you die of old age here, I will be very, very angry with it, she said. Teralian fought back a smile. I'll let it know. Good. That is settled. She stepped back, surveying the shadowy realm around her. Others might be trapped here. We should find them. 
Terralian gestured to the east, towards the dark portal. The fighting was fiercest there. They set off. Dranor, or at least this dark reflection of it, continued to break apart. The tremors that shook the world did not touch them here. The oceans had boiled away, leaving nothing but empty space. In the distance, mountain ranges floated in mid-air. Neither Alaria nor Turalyon needed to say it. If they had not succeeded, this would have been Azeroth's fate too. But as time passed, the cadence of destruction seemed to slow. The central continent of this world was holding together. How much of the Alliance expedition had survived? How much of the Horde? They arrived at the eastern end of the peninsula. The dark portal hung above them. No other living creature was in sight. No Alliance, no Horde. We're on our own, Turalyon concluded. Alaria sighed. Any ideas? Turalyon sat down cross-legged, his back to the dark portal. His heavy armor clattered as he found a comfortable position. No, there is nothing I can do to get us out of here. So I will trust in the light. A bright circle began to radiate around him. He closed his eyes, letting holy power flow through him. Fate has drawn us away from the others. I'm ready to learn why. Very well. Have a good nap, Terralian. I will stand watch. He opened his eyes slightly. Is our new friend still following us? It is. You saw it again? Valeria hesitated. I sense it now, watching us from the north. Do you not? Perhaps. Near the dark portal. That is right. Turalyon did indeed feel a ripple of menace pulsing from that direction. It was keeping its distance, so he closed his eyes again. Well, start a campfire and invite our guest in. Maybe it's just lonely and... A harmonic tone thundered across them. Turalyon leapt to his feet, drawing his hammer from its sling. Alaria spun, bow raised, arrow already knocked. Blinding light shone from a circle in the air only a few paces away. It was a rift, identical to the one Turalyon had followed to get here. All he could see through the glow was a hand beckoning them forward. A voice called out to them. This way, quickly! Turalyon's shock faded. The rift and the voice behind it were both suffused with the light. We can trust him, he told Alaria. She glanced at him, then lowered her bow. Very well. She stepped through the rift. Turalyon followed. They emerged into a clearing in a forest, surrounded by half-dead trees. The rift closed behind them. They were back on Dranor, a world still rumbling from its apocalypse. The skies. One look took Turalyon's breath away. The skies were rent asunder, stripped into pieces. Between the lingering shreds of blue was that familiar sight of swirling dark energy. Dranor and that other realm were bleeding together. I've been looking for the two of you for a very long time. The other being, the one who had drawn them here, was smiling broadly. He had fanged teeth and long black claws, but he exuded an aura of holy light. Valeria idly tapped the side of her bow, clearly considering knocking an arrow again. Who are you? Turalyon asked. I am a commander. I am a warrior of the light. And today I am a messenger of fate itself. My name is Lothraxia. The Mother of Light has foreseen that you two will help ensure the salvation of all living creatures. She sent me to rescue you. Come, sit down. We have much to discuss. They spoke for three days. Before long, Lothraxian had become very uneasy, especially after learning that an unseen foe had been sniffing at Alaria and Turalyon's heels. I fought the Legion for thousands of years. I was part of the Legion for thousands more. And I've never heard of a creature that can move through the twisting nether like that. The Thraxian had quickly understood the grim implications. If you could not see it, Turalyon, that is troubling. 
demons should not be able to evade the gaze of the light. After he had listened to their account of their time in that other realm, the Twisting Nether, Alaria would remember that, Lethraxian was convinced that the creature was one of the Legion's rarest assassins. Kiljaden had personally trained a select few to kill or capture important enemies. If it was continuing to follow them, it would not rest until it had finished them off. That meant Alaria and Turalyon were still in danger, even here. Oh yes, they'd had much to discuss over the past three days. About this world, about the Burning Legion, and how the demons had orchestrated the Horde's invasion of Azeroth. About the Twisting Nether, the chaotic realm, where the universes sparked by the light and the shadow bled together about how it could create strange reflections of real worlds like Draenor. Most importantly, Lothraxian had told them about the Army of the Light and its impossible war against the Burning Legion. He had told them the Light needed Alaria and Turalyon's help. But all of that would have to wait. We cannot risk leading that creature back to our stronghold, Lothraxian said. I will stay here with you until it is slain. Turalyon was ready to accept his help. Alaria was not. Lothraxian, you need to leave. We can protect ourselves. I'm not sure you understand how dangerous this assassin is. What is a bigger prize to the Legion? Two recruits or a commander? Alaria looked directly into Turalyon's eyes for a moment. She carefully chose her words to Lothraxian. When you leave, it will follow you. You must set a trap for it. Return to us when it is dead. Lothraxian began to object, but Turalyon cut him off. We understand the danger, Lothraxian. We understand perfectly. He gave Alaria a small nod. We will wait here. Lothraxian's eyes narrowed. He silently regarded both of them. Very well. But I will not leave you defenseless. Before he left, he offered Turalyon a few hours of instruction in the ways of the light. Yes, Turalyon was a paladin, but humans had only recently begun to wield holy power on the battlefield. Lothraxian had done so for millennia. After Lothraxian left, Turalyon was glowing, literally glowing. For Alaria, that lost its charm after the sun went down. Can you stop, please? You are ruining my night vision, she said sweetly. Turalyon was enjoying himself far too much. Does my radiance bother you? Am I delving too deeply into the unbridled power of justice and hope? Will your radiance stop someone from killing you while you sleep? As a matter of fact, it might, he said. Still, he relented. The light faded across his armor and hammer. What did you think of our new friend? I know you couldn't feel his intentions through the light. Alaria began to sharpen her arrowheads with a flat stone. He had a lot to say. None of it seemed like a lie. Turalyon looked at the ground, his voice little more than a whisper. And what did you think of his request? There was a long silence, only disturbed by the soft scrape of metal against stone. The stillness pressed in on them. Far in the distance, they could hear the nervous cries of Dranor's wildlife, unsettled from the ongoing tremors. Valeria finally put her rock down. The Mother of Light saved us from the Nether. If she wants us to wait here for a few days, fine. But asking us to march off to another war... She didn't finish her thought. She didn't need to. Turalyon simply nodded. If the Light can return us to Azeroth first, we can raise an army for it. That has to be far more useful than just the two of us. Exactly. They continued to talk through most of the night. When the sky lightened, they took turns sleeping. By midday, they were well rested. Now, all that was left was to wait for the demon to be killed. Alaria wasn't sure if Lothraxian had understood what they had asked him to do, but he had at least been willing to play along. There was no telling how long it would take. If they were to be waiting here for weeks or months, her advice to manage resources still rang true. They were running low on food and water. Turalyon left to find a river. 
Alaria set some snares in the nearby forest. When he returned, Alaria was pacing around the edge of their campsite, carefully inspecting the ground. She looked up at him with a frown. Where is the water? He shook his head. It can wait. This has been on my mind since I woke. We spent all night talking about war, but not a word about our son. We can talk about Methane later. If one of us goes to war, the other must stay behind with him. He stepped close to her. It isn't right to risk making him an orphan. Not after we already took a chance coming here. She met his gaze without blinking. He will be safe, I promise. Her hand reached up to his chin. Shh. Her dagger slipped easily into his throat. Terallion's eyes widened with shock. He staggered backward, clutching at his throat, trying in vain to stem the river of blood. She had buried the blade to the hilt. Alaria watched him without pity. My son's name is Arator, Demon. The creature that looked like Teralion roared with rage and took two stumbling steps toward her. Green fire leapt from one hand while the other produced a dagger. Alaria sidestepped the assassin, caught its elbow and pivoted. The creature crashed into the ground, its arm bent at an unnatural angle, dagger falling uselessly at its side and evaporating. Gurgling shrieks of pain and anger echoed through the trees. Alaria let it squall while she retrieved her bow and quiver. Branches crunched a few paces away, and Turalyon, the real Turalyon, stepped out of the forest, hammer in hand. Blazing light trailed off of him like smoke. Nicely done, he said grimly. It was impatient. I would have waited a few days, and I would not have left tracks everywhere. Alaria drew an arrow. What is more valuable? A commander or two new recruits? Apparently, the two recruits. Interesting. Let us talk about that. The assassin snarled and tried to scramble to its feet. Turalyon's hammer put it back down. Hard. Turalyon gestured, and the remnants of the creature's disguise vanished in a flash, revealing its true form. A lanky demon, face twisted with agony. The Thraxian had been right. This was an Eridar, an unusual one. Dark smoke leaked from its blackened, dead eyes. Anaria stood over it, aiming her bow straight down. You are a minion of the Burning Legion, yes? The demon smiled up at her. I am but one of an infinite army. I am but a single spear of an endless... Her arrow found its mark. She drew another and aimed it at a different, yet equally painful point. She did not ask her question again. The demon spat and cursed. Yes, I am of the Burning Legion, you worm. You flesh-cursed, mortal fool. Arrogant scum, doomed to crawl in dirt and filth before the great Lord of the... The creature howled again as the second arrow hit home. Alaria shook her head. You tracked us for days. Tell me why. The demon giggled. The pain had driven it half to madness. <laughs> Fate spins around you. I can feel it. I can see it. I saw it all around this world, and then it all blew up. So many little lights blinking out. But not you two. You two live. And that means fate has plans. It succumbed to a fit of manic laughter. Turalyon hefted his shield. Perhaps you're right, but you won't live to see it. The demon's eyes were filled with searing hot fury. You think we won't meet again? I will find you, both of you. I will have your souls as baubles around my neck, and you will suffer for all eternity. And then, I will find your son, Arator, and I will make him kneel before Sargeras himself, so you may watch him burn in the Master's glory. You think you've won, do you? Valeria released her bow's string. 
the arrow punched through the demon's skull. Its mouth worked soundlessly for a moment. The creature twitched once, twice, then it was still. Hilaria shrugged an apology to Turalyon. Sorry. I should have asked if you were done with it. I didn't like hearing it say Arador's name, either. The demon's body smoldered, decaying into dry dust, blowing away on the breeze, leaving nothing behind. The Army of the Light must have been keeping an eye on them. Not an hour after they had killed the assassin, radiant light silently fell upon both Alaria and Turalyon. They were enveloped in its glory, their minds elevated into another realm of existence. Turalyon felt a presence among them, a being of such profound might that it seemed all light must flow from it. He heard Alaria gasp in awe. She had never experienced the tranquil power of the light before. Neither had he, not with such intensity. A voice spoke to them, elegant, graceful, and steadfast. This was the mother of light. The two children of Azeroth, Aleria, Turalyon. I am Zira. I am glad you are unharmed, yet I weep for what you have endured. It was Alaria who responded. Do not mourn for us. We went to war to save our world. Azeroth is safe. That is why I mourn. I was there at the beginning, when mortal life was but a distant dream. To think that creatures like you would be called to face such terrible dangers, it pains me. If others had not failed, if I had not failed, you would not carry this burden. And yet we carry it gladly, because we must, Turalyon said. What is happening here? That demon said fate has its mark on us. Within you two, there is hope for the universe. Turalyon began to see Zira's shape. It was as if she were carved from luminous living crystals, held together by nothing but holy power. She was unlike any being he had ever seen. And yet, it was as if he had always known her. Through the light, he understood her nature, just as she understood his. Lothraxian said there is a war among the stars. I don't understand how we can help fight it. The war was lost long ago. The Burning Legion has altered the destiny of the universe. All lives now whirl toward oblivion, so we looked for hope. We looked for bright lights in the great dark beyond, amid the desolation of a thousand, thousand dead worlds. There are some lands that still live and thrive. Azeroth, whispered Alaria. The brightest light of all. That is what brought the Legion to you 10,000 years ago. In your people's bravery and in the demon's arrogance, the Legion tasted defeat for the first time. But they learn from their mistakes. The Orcs of Draenor were pawns in a new strategy. You fought them back, and the Legion will learn from that too. I cannot say what the next attack on Azeroth will be. I can say only but it will come soon. Alaria spoke firmly. Then we must go back to Azeroth. We will rally every nation for war. It will not be enough. It will have to be. The being's voice was shot through with sorrow. It will not. The Legion is ready for its burning crusade against your world. It only needs a path. The Horde almost gave it one. A vision emerged. An orc warlock, bent and deformed, sailing away from the Horde. Turalyon recognized him. It was the one they called Gul'dan. His hubris was his undoing. Had he succeeded, all would have been lost. But how long has it been since the Horde fled Azeroth? How many years upon your world? A little less than three, Turalyon said. 
The Legion has had decades to prepare new avenues of war. I don't understand. The currents of time flow ever forward, but the forces of the Twisting Nether are unpredictable. Look. Another vision came to life. A giant ocean appeared, and Alaria and Teralion gazed upon a massive vortex disturbing the waters. The whirlpool carried two pieces of driftwood, one at the edge where the water was calm, and the other near the center. The one on the outside drifted slowly, lazily. The one in the center was violently tossed about, circling the vortex countless times. Storms roiled the waters, jarring the currents, injecting ever more chaos into the system. Turalyon slowly began to understand. The same ocean, the same waters, yet affected differently by the same forces. Azeroth moved more slowly than the turbulent parts of the universe. The Burning Legion has all the time it needs to prepare for war. Its victims never have any time at all. Yours is a world filled with bright lights, but it is not ready. The vision changed. A barrow prison underground. There was an elf alone in a cell. His face was cold. Turalyon could feel the hatred and determination in his soul. The light will one day cleanse this one's troubled heart, and he will become our greatest champion. He will destroy the Burning Legion. Turalyon's mind whirled with questions. Then why does the Legion fear us? When you left your world, New possibilities rippled across the vast expanses of fate. The future held a glimmer of hope for the first time in ages. Your lights moved together through the cosmos. You journeyed until you reached... something else. Something new. Something I do not believe I was meant to see. An emerald star. It was there for a flash. And then it was gone. What was it? I do not know. Something the Legion has hidden from all prying eyes. Once you reach it, I believe we will finally learn how to defeat the Burning Legion. The demons know this too. Thus they dispatched an assassin to kill you. Alaria laughed softly. <laughs> it did not work out well for it. Now it is gone. That demon is not dead. I beg to differ. You destroyed but a vessel. The demon's soul returned to the Twisting Nether. In time, it will live again and resume the mission given to it by its masters. To snuff out the hope of two bright lights. Alaria muttered a curse under her breath. That demon had threatened Arator, and it could return at any time. Alaria's voice was hard. We have a son. I know. I ask you for a terrible sacrifice. You do not understand. If we had both died here, Arator would have grown up an orphan. We left him anyway. Look within my heart. See the reason why. I see love. Pure and unblemished. Turalyon's hand found hers and squeezed hard. Valeria squeezed back. I would do anything to protect Arator. To protect my people and my world. If there are enemies bent on destroying it, then I will not rest. I will give my life if necessary. But I know I will see my son again. I have known it since the moment I decided to leave Azeroth. I am glad. Though you do not yet know the light, it has already begun to speak to you. We should find the rest of the Alliance expedition. If the Legion fears the two of us, it'll tremble when we march together, Turalyon said. They have their own fate. There will be a great many wars on your world and on this one while you are gone. Azeroth will need their help in time. The conversation continued for hours. In the end, 
Alaria and Turalion made their choice. A terrible, impossible choice. A necessary choice. The visions faded away. Alaria and Turalion were alone again in the midst of a forest on Dranor. A rift opened near them. Bright light spilled out, illuminating the shattered world. We will see our son again, Alaria said. Life willing. They stepped through. Many were waiting on the other side to greet them. The Thraxian was there, a broad smile on his face. Zira floated above them, her presence a beacon of hope in a universe that desperately needed it. Welcome, Aleria and Turalian. Welcome to the Army of the Light. <laughs> 